In this video, we're going to consider the factors that affect the fatigue crack growth rate. Because once we have a crack that's growing in our material, what we really need to know is the rate at which it's growing so that we can predict the number of cycles until failure. So if there is a crack present that can grow, as I said, the life will be determined by the crack growth rate. And we define this as dA dn. And so this is the change in the crack length with number of cycles. So how much the crack grows in each cycle. And we know that if there is a crack present, there's going to be a stress concentration. And so while we have this cyclic stress, we also have a cyclic stress intensity factor. And that, in the end, is really what we need to be concerned with if we want to predict the crack growth life. So this plot here is showing on the y-axis stress versus time or stress intensity factor versus time. And so as the stress cycles between sigma min and sigma max, we also have a cycling of the stress intensity factor. And just as a reminder, the stress intensity factor K is given by the stress times this geometric factor times the square root of pi A. So we go from some value of K min, the minimum stress intensity factor, to K max as the stress is cycling. And we can then define a cyclic stress intensity factor. And this cyclic stress intensity factor is just the difference in the maximum and minimum stress intensity factors and is given by this expression here, delta sigma, so the uh, stress range, times y times that square root of pi a. Now, it's the case that if some of the cycle is in compression, then that compressive stress actually acts to make the crack close. And so during that part of the cycle, the stress isn't acting to open the crack. And so we need to take that into consideration. It turns out that there's some threshold needed to make that crack grow. And we would call that K opening, or sometimes just KOP, but it stands for opening. And that's what's needed to make that crack grow. So that opening, that critical value for K opening, the stress intensity factor needed to make K open, we can get some delta K threshold value then. So K opening minus the minimum K and that gives us our delta K threshold. Let's take a look at a couple of examples so that we get a better sense of really what this means. Okay, so in this first example up here, we have again our, our K max and K min, and our cyclic stress intensity factor varies in this way as the stress goes. Now, if we say that right here is the K opening, so you have to be at a stress intensity factor higher than this for the crack to grow. So during this part of the cycle, the crack will grow, but during this part of the cycle, the crack will not grow. So only some of the time is the crack growing. So this figure down here is sort of showing what happens when K does not exceed K opening. So for a particular minimum K, there will be some uh, sort of delta K threshold that has to be exceeded before the crack would grow. And this figure is simply illustrating how, depending on what the mean stress is, that value of delta K threshold will be different. So the, the value of delta K threshold sort of depends on where the mean stress is relative to that K opening value. So if delta K exceeds delta K threshold, there will be crack growth in every cycle. And in this case, DADN, 
the crack growth rate per cycle will depend on essentially the part that exceeds that K opening. It's also important to note that as the crack length grows, so does delta K, right? Because it's a function of crack length. So in fact, even if the load were constant, as DADN goes up, um, delta K is also, delta K is still increasing. So let's take a look at actually how DADN varies with delta K. So this little cartoon here is showing uh, the relationship between DADN, the crack growth rate, and delta K, the cyclic stress intensity factor. And note that this is plotted on a log log scale. And essentially, there is no, we're going to focus on this, this blue curve here, there's no crack growth until delta K threshold is reached. So below there, the crack's not growing. And so it starts out and the crack growth rate is initially very fast, and then it starts to slow down. And so this is sort of the stage one crack growth. And then we get into this sort of steady state crack growth region, which is called stage two. And then we eventually get to stage three where the crack starts to grow very fast. And it's at this point where K max is equal to K1C. So the maximum stress intensity factor that's realized is equal to the fracture toughness of the material. Uh, so at, at this point, the K max is equal to the K opening, right, at, at the threshold. Um, another thing that's illustrated on here, this is for two different values of R. So remember, R was equal to the stress ratio, sigma min over sigma max. And so we see how that varies with R. A larger value of R essentially means that the maximum is higher or the, the min is smaller, but that the range is bigger and that more of the time will be in tension. So we're interested, like usual, in sort of the steady state region here. So where this crack growth is linear, and we can find that from this log log plot that the crack growth rate is equal to some constant times delta k to the n. This is sometimes called the Paris power law. And we can find that value of n, of course, by plotting on a log log plot and then finding the slope of that line. So there may be cases where we are interested in actually determining the number of cycles to failure. And we can do that by rearranging this equation, essentially. So we may want to, for example, be able to compare a calculated life to the actual component life or to predict the lifetime of a component. So we'll just start here with the, the same equation we had, DADN equals C delta K to the N. And we're then going to rearrange this uh, to essentially plug in for delta K, right? So we, we know what delta K is, so we're going to plug that in down here. And now we can rearrange and integrate over the crack length. So from the initial crack length to the final crack length uh, with respect to dA. So we, we rearrange here, and we do this integral, and... Uh, we simplify a little bit and we sort of get to this point because these things will be constants. They can come outside of the integration and so we're just integrating y square root of a with respect to dA. So in the end, after we perform that integration, we end up with this expression here. So this is the number of cycles to failure as a function of the initial crack length. And so we have 1 over c 1 over delta sigma square root of pi y to the n times 2 over 2 minus n. So this clearly does not hold if n equals 2. Um, and then we have sort of the final crack length minus the initial crack length 
raised to the power 2 minus n over 2. And so these are the uh, different variables that show up here. Um, and this allows us to make a prediction for the number of cycles to failure based on the initial and final crack lengths.